Mm. Don't they smell like a man? Okay. Anyway, so chapter four, we're going to talk about lines and angles. Okay, if you look over to the sideboard here, Monday, 1118, <coughs> we discussed the test. SWBA students will be able to. ID, which stands for identify relationships between lines and angles. Okay, oop, I said today 4.1, not 3.1. And I oop, SK, SK, SK. Okay? Oh, um, we need to fix that. I need okay. to do jar to jar as well. Jot to jot to jot? Do you want me to bring the back a bit more? I think we'll do. Okay. So if I want to hop into your quest, okay? So lines and angles. We're going to start off with some review here, okay? So reviewing, hey, what do we know about lines and angles? Okay. So a plane contains a finite number of lines. Finite means it's limited. So a plane can only contain a set number of lines. Like it hits its limit, that's how long it contains. Is that true or false? False. That's false. A plane contains contain infinitely many lines because if we recall, a plane extends in every direction forever. So a plane is infinitely big, so it's not like it can hold just so much. So much. A plane never gets full, quote unquote. Okay? Okay. It can always hold more. But only a plane can hold So they have to have to charge more for lunch, right? Okay. Uh, okay. Two points lying on the same plane are coplanar. That is true. That's the definition of coplanar. Co-sharing with, okay? So two points lying on the same plane are coplanar. Okay. If two distinct planes intersect, they intersect in exactly one line. If two planes intersect, they intersect in a line. That is true. Two planes do intersect in a line, okay? For a real world example, guys, okay? Think of this wall and the ceiling. This wall and the ceiling. Where do they intersect? The line of this whole crease up there. Okay? They intersect at that line with that whole crease up there. <coughs> okay. A length consists of two endpoints and all the points between them. A line segment. I guess I really should have two points. A blank is made up of an infinite number of points. This, uh, I guess this is this is this is really a bad question. I don't like that. It'd be a line. I really don't like that question. Actually, I need to rework that. I'm gonna leave this over there. They did. They just. I I didn't catch that last year. That Maybe I like it then, I don't like it now. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe as I just went down the lead, I'm like, oh, maybe I didn't like that. Okay. So I wrote myself notes from the previous year to be like, oh, I need to change this. And so I changed some things, but I don't think I changed it. I didn't think of it. So we continue on. Two lines can. We have five different options for what two lines can do. Okay? The first option is they can intersect at a single point. They can intersect at a single point. Kind of like a single lady. That would be all I'm saying. Okay. They can intersect at a single point. So there we see two lines intersecting at one point. Okay. Mm -hmm. The second option, what do we think we see here? We see parallel. Them parallel. parallel. They can be parallel. 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 Okay. And what symbol could we put on these lines to show that they're parallel? Um, Arrows! That tells us they're parallel. Okay, we're going to be using that a lot this chapter. Well, I thought it was congruent. That's congruent for a sake of sketch. <coughs> okay, so they can also be the same line. They can be the same line. So here, it looks like it's one line, it's actually two lines stacked on top of each other, but it's the same exact line. Okay, they, they can call their total tie here. But you'd be given two equations, but then like one can be simplified to be the other. Yeah. <coughs> um, yeah. So like a good example of that could be like this is just an extra example. You don't have to write this part down. But let's say you have like y equals four x plus five for a line, and then you have another line that's like two y is equal to eight x plus ten. Well, secretly, they're the same line, because if you divide this whole equation by 2, which we can, you can divide both sides by 2 and it works out with math, so you end up with y is equal to 4x plus 5. So, like, secretly, they're the same, although at first they might look different. Yeah, great question.
function right now. Okay, a little bit more about parallel lines here. Parallel lines are any two or more lines. You can have like three parallel lines, four parallel lines, okay? That run in the, um, that are in the same plane, and they do not what? Touch, they don't intersect, very good, okay? And the symbol we like to use, we like to use one of two symbols for this. We like to use slashes, which I more commonly use, or the straight up and down, which you see a lot of textbooks use. But I'm more fan of the slash. So that way it doesn't look like L's or something like that, and we can just use that. So, okay. An example where we might see more than two parallel lines, the flag, if you look at all these stripes, these are all parallel, and there's still two of them. Look at number four. What's our, what's this showing here in four? They are okay, they form a right angle, which means the lines are not parallel, but they are perpendicular. What's our symbol for perpendicular? Box. Um, that's our symbol for showing that they're right angles, the box. But how do we uh, notate just the perpendicular? So upside down. Like this line. Like this yeah, it's an upside down T. Okay. Okay. You might wonder, Mr. Carlos, why don't we just make a small version of this? Why don't we just do this? What would that look like, guys? Addition. Addition. That, that would confuse us, okay? Well, you don't use the upside down, T, upside down T's to make anyone else. So it's a little more straightforward. Okay? And the last one is that they're in different planes and don't intersect. So parallel is the same plane and they don't intersect. Different planes and don't intersect. For review from chapter one, what do we call that? They are called. Skew. This is called skew. Okay? So they don't intersect and they're in different planes. Okay? Okay? Not only do they not intersect, they're in different planes. Okay? So if I go back to my box example, which I um, enjoy doing and I think it's a good practical example for you guys. Okay? This line here. And this line here, where my, or my bottom here, that these are parallel. They're in the same plane, they're on the same side. If I were to say this line up here, though, compared to this line down here, they're not in the same plane. They don't intersect, but they're not in the same plane. They're called skew. Okay? So it's only parallel is if they're in the same plane. It's like my right hand, and up here, these, would be, these lines would be parallel. Or here, and down here would be parallel. But here, off the corner like here, those would be skew because they're not in the same plane. Or like this line and this line down here, they're not in the same plane at all. Okay? They are skew because they don't intersect. So even though they don't run the same direction, they don't intersect and they're in, the, and they're in different planes. They're skew. Mm -hmm. Going right below this, we're going to talk about the difference between, <coughs> excuse me, some differences between parallel lines and skew lines. So what's true for both of them is that they do not intersect. Parallel lines don't intersect, and skew lines do not intersect. Okay, so neither of those lines intersect. Parallel don't, skews don't. Here's where they're different. Parallel lines have to be coplanar. They have to be coplanar. They're in the same plane. As we see here, they're on the same side of this figure. <coughs> Skew lines, though, are non-coplanar. They have to be in different planes. So as we see here, one's down here, one's up here. They're in different planes entirely. That's the reason why they intersect. So it's not necessarily because they're in the same direction, but because they're non-coplanar. Questions on that? On the cost. Okay. Move on to the next page. <coughs> All right. Okay. So we have this uh, this diagram here. Okay, with six different planes, kind of like a box. <coughs> six different planes. You recall we had diagrams similar to this back in chapter one. Okay. Our first question is asking us to identify a line parallel to line AB. Okay. Okay. There's two different answers. I heard one of them. Line parallel to AB would be line CD, GH. Okay. And the other one would be line GH. 
Okay, we only really need to identify one, but those would both be answers. Would y and ef be parallel? No. No, why not? They're not the same plane. It's not the same plane. They don't share a plane with them, so it'd be one instead. Sucks. You, okay. Name a plane parallel to plane EFH. EFH, that's kind of the bottom plane here. What's well, a plane that doesn't intersect with that plane? ACD, right? And we can name a plane, we can name a plane by any three points on the plane, as long as what? As long as they're not on the same line. Okay? So A, C, and D are not on the same line. So you could have said A, B, D, A, B, C, A, A, any order, any three points on the plane. So name a line skewed A B. <coughs> what, what what would be a line that was skewed to line A B? Yeah. Line yeah. Yeah. Now we need all lines parallel, all lines parallel to the plane A B C. All lines parallel to this top plane. So what are all the lines that run that same um, scratch at? I don't like that one. I don't like the idea of calling lines parallel to plane. We're scrapping that one. Yeah, we're not going to have it on the next time. Correct. Yeah, we're scrapping them. Okay. Five, a pair of parallel planes. We already looked at some earlier, so let's come up with a different pair. A, C, E, C, A, C, E, so this plane over here on the side, okay? And then uh, you said uh, B, H, F? Very good. Well, can Taylor call those planes different names since we're on the same plane? Yeah. Yeah, very well could. So then our, our last question, number six right now, why are lines F, E, and C not skewed? Because they're in the same plane, right? They're coplane. Very good. Question number that. Okay. We're going to be talking about this idea today, um, right below this, okay, of a transversal. This is a big concept from this chapter, okay? I'd say this, I'd argue that this might be uh, one of the, like, the biggest core concepts of this chapter is parallel lines, okay? Chapter is all about parallel lines, transversals, and angular relationships. So now we're talking about trans, uh, transversals. So transversal is a line that intersects two or more coplanar lines at different points. So it intersects two or more coplanar lines at different points, okay? And we have, uh, I'm going to give you guys a, an example and a non-example, okay? What's it mean to be a non-example? What, what not to do. Yeah, what not to do. Yeah. Proves it wrong. Okay, I'm going to give you guys an example, and I'm going to give you guys a non-example. <laughs> little, little side story this is for like photography, okay? So, uh, <laughs> you know, like, you know how obviously like, I record my lessons, put videos on them, uh, so you guys might, you guys make some notes, or if you guys like, you know, have to ask questions or need help at home, you guys can watch it, help yourself out, kind of thing. Okay. So, um, I was talking to Mrs. Olson um, out in the hallway earlier, and she was, and I, I helped her um, learn how to make videos and like post them on, 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 so she could do that with her class too. Um, and so I know I, we might have her have her have that happen, or she might have somebody who's like do that, but. Um, but she was telling me today, she's like, she was like, like her and Mr. Malley and I were all joking around the hallway. She's like, um, like, oh, what'd you do this week? What'd you do this week? She's like, well, you know, like, uh, you know, I, I was just walking, we just sat down as a family. We're like, Friday night, let's watch Mr. Costle's videos, you know, let's get, let's get after it. And they're joking, like, yeah, it's Friday night, guys. Let's go watch the video. And I was like, yeah. You know, just a, just a very big joke. Um, but I thought that was pretty funny. So I kind of cracked it. I'm like, oh, I'm sure, I'm sure you guys are like, yeah, let's catch up on our math, guys. Okay. Anyway, um, an example of this <coughs> oh, 
plus one a, plus b, minus b plus a plus. So here, on this one, line a is our transversal. Line a would be our transversal. Because line A is the line that's intersecting two or more lines. It's intersecting lines B and C, and it's intersecting them at different points. It intersects line B right over here, intersects line C right over here. So line A is acting as our transversal. Okay. So trans kind of just means across. Okay. It's like transportation, you're traveling across, you transport, um, anything like that. We're transform, we're moving across, okay? So transversal is going across these two lines, okay? Non-example, non-example, okay? Um, would be something like this. Okay? So that could be a non-example. You know, what was that look for? I don't like how you couldn't just use A and B again. Well, I wanted to make them different. So that way we were confused about like, oh, well, like which A, which B, which C are we talking about? I think we all would have thought. Should I have just started like at some place different besides B and F? No. No. Okay. That's all we can do for me anyway. Okay, um, let's go W, let's go P, um, and let's go K. Just to, just to, just to trigger green a little bit. I don't want to be confused. Well, what about these two? Those are the two. Good. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so uh, we have these lines. It doesn't really matter what we call them. Uh, but anyway, uh, so here we do have a line. Actually, all three of these lines are intersecting two or more lines. But why is this an odd example? Yeah, it's all intersecting at the one point. For it to be a transverse, we need to intersect at different points, okay? That's our big difference here. Yeah, go ahead. Yep, yep. So let's say, hey, if you move W even over just like a <coughs> fraction there, so smallest amount, would it then be a transversal? Yeah, it would be. Um, <coughs> but unfortunately, uh, that's not how it is. And then you actually have three different things. Because W would act as a transversal, intersect the other two lines. P would intersect the other two lines, that's a transversal. K would intersect the other two. So all of them would then be a transversal in their own way. Okay. Okay. So we're going to talk about this idea of interior angles and exterior angles. And we got this. Honestly, it's, it's a little too colorful. But that's okay. It's probably going to aggravate some people. But great. It like, kind of looks weird on a piece of paper with black and white. Yeah, but it's like grayscale with it too. Because it's like, so it's like black and white, but like it's not. You can like see the Shade of it here. Yeah, I don't like this one either. Okay, so we're going to talk about this idea of interior angles and exterior angles. Okay, so we have two lines and they're cut or intersected by a transversal. What lines are transversal here? M. M okay, very good. I want us to keep identifying our transversals. M's are transversal. Okay, um, so when we talk about this idea of interior and exterior, interior means inside or outside? Inside. Exterior means inside or outside? Outside, okay? So we have to ask ourselves, interior, exterior compared to what? Okay? And we're saying it's going to be interior, exterior compared to the two lines that are cut by our transversal. So we're going to say an interior angle are going to be the angles inside of lines K and N. The exterior angles are going to be the lines outside of it. So somebody give me an example of a, an angle that's inside of these two lines. Great. Six. Okay? Angle six, okay? Rachel, give me another one. Okay? Raise your hand to give me another one, somebody. Okay, Kevin. Angle four. Angle four. And raise your hand, somebody give me the fourth and final one. Anybody see this? Angle two. Angle two. Uh, try again. Uh, angle two, four, six. Uh, angle four. Angle four. Five. Very good. Angle five would be our last one. Okay? <laughs> Like 
also a lot of crap. Which that makes sense. Yeah, it's not all like all the Yeah. Yeah, but a lot of beef can be a lot of I like cooked stuff oh. with a lot of Also, in Wizard, who picked those points? They're not even like their favorite. Okay. One, two, three, four. Oh, okay. Oh, oh Ray? I like Ray. Ava can put that on my um uh what I call sleep. Is that a new hoodie? Nice. Okay. Uh okay. anyway, so these four angles are the interior yeah. angles, okay? Because they're inside of these two lines cut by the transversal end. If you guys kind of look at this, they kind of look like they're inside, don't they? Yeah. If you're going to call any of these angles inside, these are probably the four you pick, okay? So what's that leave as our exterior angles? Raise your hand if you want to help me with an exterior angle. Taylor. One. Okay. Green. Eight. Okay. Sarah. Three. Okay. Rachel. Jokey. Okay, very good, okay? So those would be our four extra angles. Does it really matter the order we listed them? No! Okay, I just kind of want to like I said. Do I have to write the angle sign? Yes. Because otherwise you don't know if it really matters an angle or something else. I'm talking about it's... it's I'm Where, what else are you going to be talking angle. about? Okay, just label angle. I have a question. What else are you going to be talking about that is just a number? Like, that's the only number that... Degrees, uh, the measure of an angle. But why would I be putting it under the list of angles that we're supposed to Exactly. Okay. After you list, list out like a buzz drive, you're going to put dollar signs around it. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. What are you talking about? about? If you like list out like a budget or like a list of costs, you know, like a menu, for example, yeah. there's dollar signs in front of everything. Yeah. I mean, there should be. Ask all the others. Okay. So the interior angles are between the two lines cut by the transversal. Exterior angles are outside two lines cut by a transversal. I'm going to write that down as well, and I'm going to encourage you guys to write that down if you think this is something we might lose throughout this. Okay, so these are between two lines cut by a transversal. I can't see if your hands are away. Your hands are lying. Yeah. Also, the numbers don't. Follow the same legal. No, they don't. Really yes, they do. Look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, yeah, it's, 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 it switches the order. It does. Did it be great? I even, I even drew it on my paper. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my goodness, I can't believe I just did that. I just spelled yeah. the tween with one. Wait, 
No, 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 sorry, sorry, you guys have a second before. I, I haven't laid out their plate of mine right now that I'm fixing. Okay, so, can we go right below this? Voice it off, please, voice it off, please. Can bring it back in. Okay. <coughs> Name a pair of angles that fits each description. Name a pair of angles that fits each description, okay? We have alternate exterior, oh, we haven't gone over this yet. Okay. Oh, yeah, no, I can do this right now. Yeah, okay, never mind. Okay. So, there is no letter. What do you mean? When we say we're going to have, ex we have exterior and interior angles. We just talked about those, right? Okay, now we're going to talk about uh, alternate, consecutive, alternate interior, and corresponding, okay? And actually, I'm changing up the order of this move, okay? Because um, we're going to go to this table we have. You guys have this table? Okay, we're gonna go to this table. I don't even know how that table is. You guys have it. Continue on. Yep. Yep. Yeah, you, you guys have one table in this, and it's that table. Blue screen on mine, because otherwise I can't fit it on my screen. No. Blue screen on mine, otherwise I can't fit it on my screen. Okay, everybody has a table. That's all of the order numbers. Okay. So my table does not look like yours. Okay. I know. I had to make mine look weird in order for it to fit on here. But if you look here, this is the equivalent of the whole first row for you guys. This transversal okay. line isn't even labeled on there. Okay. Uh, ah, yeah. that's true. Okay. So, okay. First idea we're gonna talk about, corresponding angle. Corresponding, what's correspond mean? Like the same and not. Okay, the same and not the same, they're what? Like, across. Okay. They kind of go together, don't they? The things correspond, they kind of match up. Okay. The same not, okay? They kind of go together. So we're going to talk about corresponding angles. So from this picture that we have, okay, we're going to say an example of corresponding angles is like angle 1 and angle 5. Because if we look up here at this intersection, where's angle 1 at? It's in the top left spot, isn't it? Yes. Where's angle 5 at? Top it's in the top left spot over here. Okay. So those will say correspond. Okay. Can somebody give me another pair of angles that would correspond here? Okay, Rachel. Angle two. Angle two and angle six. Very good. Okay, they're both in the top right of their positions. Okay, Taylor. Angle seven, angle three. Yep, angle seven, and angle three. Okay, those are corresponding as well. Okay, then we have one more pair of corresponding angles. Okay, Sarah. Angle four and angle eight. Angle four and angle eight. Very good. I think I'm So, we're going to have, um, for our description here, guys, for our description here, we're going to write four different things in this box, okay? So, heads up, we're going to write four different things in this box. So, we're going to highlight which things are what by bullets, okay? So, for our description, we have one interior. It's not the interior, that's like one interior, okay? Yep, one interior and one exterior. Okay, so we have four things right in this box. There's one interior and one exterior. So for all these angles, if you look at the first pair, one was an exterior angle and five was an interior angle. Do you really think I'm ready to put four things in this box? Yes. Okay. <laughs> angle two was an, interior, was an exterior angle, so angle six was an interior. Seven was exterior, three was interior. Four was ex interior, eight was exterior. Okay, so they're matched up one interior, one exterior, they are on the same side of the transversal. They are on the same side of the transversal. So if we look up at our transversal here, one and five, they're both on the left side. Three and seven, they're both on the left. Two and six are both on the right. Four and eight are both on the right. So they're on the same side of the transversal. They don't split the sides or alternate sides of the transversal. Okay. So they're in the and then the third thing we write is they are in the same position at the intersection. They're in the same position at the intersection. Okay. So that's what we're talking about. Like one was in the top left, five is in the top left. Two 
two, or two's in the top right, six in the top right, okay? And then kind of a quick way for us to remember this is they're, in the, they're on the same side and kind of in the same spot, so to speak. Okay. The same side, they're like one and five, they're both left. They're kind of in the same spot, they're both on the top. They're both top left. Okay. Yep, yeah, and that box is finished. You should give us the description first so we can find the answer. We probably should not do that because I think you're going to probably just read the description. Okay. Okay, anybody still need this before we go on to the next one? Somebody need this? Okay, alternate interior angles, alternate interior angles, okay? So, what? We're gonna, oh, sorry. Yeah, we're gonna go to the facts later. We don't, we don't need those yet. But it's, instead of doing like two different tables where everything's mixed up and you don't forget them, we have to write down things twice. We're putting it all in one convenient location for later. We learn this next time. No. Okay. So alternate interior angles, okay? So these, as it says, we're gonna do uh, two, two, two things for a description. We're gonna do a description first, we're gonna try that. They are both interior. They are both interior. And as evidenced by the name, alternate interior angles, they're both interior. What, no way, okay? And the other thing is, they are on opposite sides of the transversal. They're an opposite side of the transversal. Okay? So they're both interior, and they're an opposite side of the transversal. Hence the alternating. So interior means they're interior angles, they're inside those two lines. Alternate, they're alternating, they're changing sides of the transversal. So with those two descriptions, can somebody um, see if they can try to give me a pair? Melissa. Very good, angle six and angle three. They are both interior and they're on different sides of the transversal, okay? Sarah. Um, four plus. Very good, angle four and angle five, okay? Now, can we have any more? No. No, no because those are all the interior angles, okay? Is it, is it basically the same thing as like the right here? Okay, questions on that one? Okay. So once again, if you look at the name, can you really know what we're talking about? Alternate interior, alternate inside the transversal, interior inside those two lines. Okay? Let's go on to the next one, alternate exterior. And as Taylor said, what do we think this is going to be the same as previous, but instead of interior, it's exterior. Okay? So in this case, the description, um, they're both exterior. And then our second one's the same as the second one from last time. They are on opposite sides of the transversal. So if you want to give me an example of alternate to your angles, okay, Kevin? Um, very good, angle one and angle eight. They're kind of weird because they're really far apart, okay? One's on the left side and eight's on the right side, they're both exterior. Carly? Very good, angle two and angle seven are the other pair of alternate exterior angles, okay? There are no other alternate exterior angles. Sarah? Well, why couldn't you one and two be that? Okay, um, that's a great question. Why couldn't one and two be that? Um, because we have to also go completely counter, okay? So that's a great question. Why can't one and two be alternate exterior? Um, kind of the same reason why three and four were alternate interior. Um, is because we want to go different intersections. It's a great question. Yeah. Yeah. So with these that we're doing, we want to go different intersections. Okay. Because we know one and two form a linear pair, or like three and four form a linear pair, that kind of thing. We already have a description for those. So we'll speak. Yeah. Great question. Okay. Continuing on, consecutive or same side interior angles. Okay. So you guys. You guys will sometimes see this as both consecutive or same side. I really prefer just to call it same side. Um, so 
95% of the time for me, you'll see a, a same side. I'll talk about a same side just because I think it um, makes a lot more sense. Um, they call it consecutive, consecutive to they follow each other. Um, so instead of alternating interior angles, these are on the same side. Okay. So description, these are both interior. And yeah, and they're, they're on the same side of what? Very good. So they're both on the same side of transversal. Of transversal. <coughs> okay. So does somebody want to try and give me an example of these? Okay. Go ahead, Graydon. Yep, angle three and five. Angle three and angle five, very good. They're on the same side of the transversal, and they're both interior. Okay. And then there's one other pair here. Okay, go ahead, Rachel. Very good, angle four and angle six. Okay, once again, I really like the fact that these are straightforward from their names, because if you remember what the name means, you know what angles are talking about. Okay. That same side, we're talking about the transversal, interior between those two lines. Okay. Raise your hand if you still need this before we go into our fifth row. Okay. Same side exterior angles. Same side exterior angles. Okay. So what do you think is <coughs> between this one and the last one? Um, they're, on, they're both exterior. Very good. And they're still on the same side of the transversal. So they're both exterior. And yes, they are on the same side of the transversal as the name says. I really love it when our uh, names are just based on exactly what they are. I love that. Nice straightforward. Not getting confusing. And it's what they are. I was tweaking that on my desk. On my laptop. I forgot this one. Man, that was really long. Right? It's just underlying really words. I like really words. Oh, wow. oh, wow. oh, wow. Okay, raise your hand and give me an example of same side exterior. Kevin, angle one and angle seven, very good. Same side of the transversal both from left and their exterior. James Michael Stevens, angle two and eight. Very good, those are both on the same side of the right side of the transversal and they're both exterior. Okay, questions on that one? Okay. All right, so now, no. Okay. Don't worry. okay, now we're going to go to that previous page where we were at before. That, uh, I believe it was our second page. Is that no, correct? Third page, but second page. Okay, back to this example two up here. So now we can actually go through and we can say what are um, alternate exterior, consecutive interior, alternate interior corresponding, okay? Um, so we just need a pair. So on all of these, there's more than one pair possible. We just need a pair. I'm going to actually ask you to go through and do A, B, C, and D real quick on your own. Oh, geez, no, thank you. And if you need to, yeah, we can flip back to that chart. October 6th.
So um, raise your hand if you want to share a pair of ultimate exterior angles. Okay, Kevin. One and seven. Okay, one and seven. Very good. Is that the only option we could have listed? Oh, no. no, we also could have done two and eight. Okay, three. Uh, all consecutive interior, or like I like to call them, same side, because I think it's more straightforward. Okay, four and five. Very good. Is that the only option we could have done? Mm -hmm. No, we could have done three and six. Okay. Okay, they're alternate interior angles. You know, three and five. Is that the only option? No. No. We could have done four and six. Okay. And then corresponding angles. We have four different options here, but we just need one of them. Evan, help me out. Uh, one and five. One and five, very good, okay? That's going to done two and six, three and seven, four and eight, okay? Um, give a little bit of room below this, and I want us to put in there. What are, give me a pair of vertical angles. Somebody give me a pair of vertical angles that we see here. Go back to chapter one. Okay, Sarah. Angle three and angle three. Uh, not quite. Okay, Kevin. Angle one and angle three. Very good. That'd be a pair of vertical angles. Angle one and angle three. Okay. So the reason they're vertical is because um, they are opposite each other. Their sides make two straight lines, or that X we like to look at. Okay. And they have the same vertex. Okay. So they have the same vertex. They are opposite each other. There. The lines make two straight. Uh, they're assuming their sides make two straight lines, or the, that x we're looking for. What do you know about vertical angles? Vertical angles are 100% of the time what? Vertical angles. Same <laughs> they measure, so they are depending on the width. Okay? <laughs> Somebody give me a linear pair. A linear pair here. Two angles that form a linear pair. Could it be on our final? Sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, one and four would work, okay? A linear pair are two angles that make a line together, so they're adjacent. Share that vertex, so they're adjacent, and they add up to 180. They're adjacent and supplementary there. A linear pair is a think of pair that makes a line. No, because they um, they're not adjacent. Um, so even though they add, they could add up to 180, maybe they aren't adjacent. So that was a question. Three questions. They have to be next to each other. Okay. Okay, so go ahead um, to the next page and we see this example three there. <coughs> okay. So, um, yeah, so letter A, why don't you go ahead and do that individually real quick and then look up when you're done. Do letter A individually and look up when you're done. Okay, so what line is the transversal? It's line R. R. Line R is a line intersecting two or more lines there. Okay, there be corresponding angles are on the blank length of the transversal. Compared to the transversal, corresponding angles like one and three are what? Same side. Very good. Corresponding angles have to be on the same side of that transversal. Okay, and then we're asking four pairs of corresponding angles, okay? Amber, help me out with one of them. Okay, uh, not quite, those will not quite be corresponding. Um, Gray, do you want to help her out? One and what would be? One and three. One and three would be. So those are both at the top left of their intersections, okay? Amber, you ready to reload and try again? Very good. Angle two and four would work. They're both in the top right of their intersection, okay? Um, Rowan, give me another pair. Awesome. Angle seven and angle five, okay? And last but not least, Simone, give me the final pair. Very good. Angle eight and angle six. Okay, the order we list them in really does not matter. We're saying, hey, these are two angles that are corresponding. They're in the same spot. Questions on that? Okay. Um, <clears throat> now we have this idea. Remember, it says corresponding angles postulate. We have this idea of the corresponding angles postulate. Okay. The corresponding angles postulate. When two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, 
and two parallelized are cut by a transversal, the resulting corresponding angles, the resulting corresponding angles, are congruent. Okay? When two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, <coughs> the resulting corresponding angles are congruent. So, if I say these lines are now parallel, you guys don't have this line on there, that's okay. If I say these lines are not parallel, okay? Or excuse me, if I say these lines are parallel, and I say, let's just say angle one has a measure of uh, 130 degrees. Looks like it's over 90 there. Um, what, what's another angle we automatically know according to the corresponding angle postulate? Four. Four. Five. Angle five, what would angle five be? 130. 130, because these angles are corresponding. And according to the corresponding angles postulate, when two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, well, what do we have here? These lines are parallel, M and N are parallel, and they're cut by this transversal up here, looks like L, then these corresponding angles are congruent. They're going to be congruent. Now, so I hear someone say, if we know angle one, we also know angle four. How do we know angle four? They're vertical angles. What would angle four be? 130. So now, we know eight, because not only is it corresponding with four, it's also vertical with five. I, I, I spit all this one. So this one, we, we, I, we have to be given that. Once you're given that one, you're able to find those other three. And can you actually find even more? Yeah. Yeah, so what angle are you talking about, Rachel? Two. Angle two would be 50 degrees. Because angle one and angle two form a, let's see what's written down after I forget, form a linear pair. Well, do, do, you know, do we notice two and four also form a linear pair? Yes. Yeah. Well, if we know angle two, do we know another angle? No. Angle three, how do you know angle three? Vertical. They're vertical angles, so they're congruent. And then Rachel's saying, well, six and seven, two. And could we list off a bunch of different ways how we know those? Yes. Yeah, we know six because it's a linear pair with either five or eight. We also know six because it corresponds with two. And then what else do we know? Seven, for all the same reasons, vertical angles with six, linear pair with five and eight, corresponding with three. There's lots of different ways you can know that. Okay. So isn't that kind of cool how from one angle, we were given one angle and the fact that these two lines were parallel, we were able to find all eight angles. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's some cool problem solving stuff, okay? And what we're actually going to do, what we're actually going to do now is um, we're going to continue on. No, there's actually no homework today. Okay. Um, so I know what was, okay. What we're actually going to do is we're going to go back into the table and we're going to look at some stuff here, okay? Facts? So we're going to look at the facts, okay? Yeah. Big facts, okay? And we're going to start with corresponding angles, okay? <coughs> because what we're going to do, guys, is there's not a homework today, but there is a 4142 assignment that's together that I'm going to give you guys on Wednesday, my group, okay? So that assignment together, because these sections are kind of combined, because now we're going to start into section 4.2 a little bit. So we're combining that. We're going a little bit longer on the notes today, so we go a little bit short on the notes next time when we have work time. Okay? Wait. I'm being serious. Oh, no, I like that. Okay, that's too bad. So facts, and these are facts only when the two lines are parallel. This fact is only true when the two lines are parallel. I want you to write that above the facts column, because that's going to be the case for all five of these rows. And then these are facts only when the two lines are parallel. Okay? We said corresponding angles are what when uh, the two lines are parallel? Corresponding angles, Bosch said they are congruent. Write it out, you can put the symbol in there. So corresponding angles, we said what the examples are, the description, and when the two lines are parallel, we're talking about the two lines cut by the transversal, those are always going to be congruent 100% of the time. <coughs> Let me show you this little trick, okay? If I, hold, if I hold my fingers like this, okay, I hold my fingers like this right now, okay? I hold my fingers like this, okay? 
right now, all my fingers like this, okay? These angles uh, that's formed between my thumb and my pointer finger, you'd say those angles are the same, right? Yeah. They're congruent, okay? So if I slide it down, are they still the same? Yeah, they're still congruent even though I moved it. Well, that's kind of like here, okay? So it starts off the same, slide it down, one and five are the same. Isn't that neat? A little like hand trick there. Okay. Mr. Titus taught me this actually this last Thursday. I can't remember the name of it. Okay. So, yeah, I'm not saying. Yeah, he taught me that. He taught me on the, on the, was it the right down or the right back? I can't remember. But, well, that's pretty cool. So, like, that's slick. Okay. So, anyway, so you can think of that with corresponding angles. You move it down this way, they still correspond, and they're congruent. Okay. Because you didn't move your thumb and your finger. Okay. But angle wise, you put them together farther apart. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to alternate interior angles. Okay. Well, for this one here, let's look back to our, our picture here. So we're gonna you guys can stay on that on that page. I'll just keep flipping back and forth. Okay. Somebody give me an example of alternate interior angles here. Three and six. Alternating sides of the transversal, both interior of these two lines. What do we notice about these two angles? They are congruent. And what do we notice about four and five, the other pair of alternate interior angles? They're also congruent. So when those two lines are parallel, alternate interior angles are congruent. Nope. They won't be true for all of them. Okay. Now if I took this, took this, okay, I have my angle still. I have my angle still. Okay? They're congruent. And I go like this. I have alternate interior angles, okay? And did I move my thumb and, and my finger? Did I change the angle I had? No, so the angles are still congruent, okay? So you can start here. Twist. I just changed the position it's at. I didn't change the measure. Alternate interior angles, start here. And you just twist. Alternate interior angles are still going to be congruent. That's it. Okay. Um, Okay, let's look at the next one. For alternate exterior angles, let's look at what happens in this picture. Okay, Can somebody give me a pair of alternate exterior angles. One and eight. What do you notice about the angles one and eight? They're congruent. Okay, somebody give me the other pair of alternate exterior angles. Two and seven. What do you notice about them? They're congruent. Now, does that mean that two is congruent with eight? No. But it's congruent with the, with the pair, okay, with the alternate exterior angle to pair with. So alternate exterior angles are going to be congruent when those two lines are parallel, okay? So it's only true when those lines are parallel, and when the lines are parallel, it's true 100% of the time. I got another thing with this one, okay? Right, this is, yeah, okay. Start off here again. Okay, start off here again, okay? So this one, instead of flipping this way, you gotta flip, and you gotta go this way. So now they're both outside, they're exterior, and they're still congruent, okay? What's up, Maggie and Peyton? Okay, you guys put those tests on my laptop every day, okay? Question, why do you have a box? Where's the box again? I was using the box again earlier. Is it Q? What? Oh, yeah, this is Q with very long fingers. Okay, so the alternate exterior angle. Start off with the finger here, flip, and go this way. Okay, so now, now you have your angles outside your, your, your two lines. That's a lot of paper. It is. And that's for us, then. Um, something. Give me two of us, okay? So, Start this way, flip, go outside. Alternate exterior angles. Once again, my pinky and my thumb and my pointer did not change the angle. They're still congruent. Okay. Next one. Consecutive or same side interior angles, like I prefer called same side interior angles. Okay. Give me a pair of same side interior angles here, guys. Three and five. Three and five. What do we notice? They're not the same, but they are. No, they're not. Oh, they're they're not. Supplementary, which means they add up to 180. If we look at the other pair of same side interior angles, four and five, six, what do you notice about them? They're supplementary too. Okay? So, same side interior angles, when the two lines are parallel, they are supplementary. Which, if you need to remind yourself, yeah, if you need to remind yourself, they add up to 180, okay? And yes, if you wanted, you could definitely just say, Okay. <laughs> so that way we can get all the other stuff and storage this. Mm -hmm. So technically, you only need geometry for geometry. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, see if I can. <coughs> he was talking to me the other day. Yeah. 
that's, that's all your homework is, okay? I'm not going to give you guys a worksheet, okay? These next two are your homeworks. I'm going to ask you to come back next class, have them done, okay? Um, your entire grade right there. Okay. Oh, that's nice. 70% I'm going to agree. Okay, so finish off example one with these two. Okay, given that the, that the lines intersected are parallel, okay, 